Hey English 104 students, I'm here with a video to help you understand why we write introductions and more importantly, perhaps for your persuasive research paper, how we write introductions, okay? So I have a document that I'm going to upload along with this video that walks you through some steps that you can follow. And then it also has an example that is color coded and has some comments over in the side. So hopefully that'll help you have some things to look for as you are writing your own introduction. So really what is an introduction for a paper? It is largely the gist of what your paper is going to be. It's trying to get your reader interested in your topic. It's trying to inform them about anything that they need to know before they start to get into the hardcore research that you've done. And it informs them about the debate and your stance. Okay, um, so all of those should end up in your research paper introduction in some form. Uh, so let me share my screen with you so that we can essentially walk through those elements step by step. When I share the screen, let's see here. Alrighty. So essentially, let me blow this up a little bit. These are the basics to an introductory paragraph. Many of you have commented already uh, right on the hook in some of your assignments that you've, that you've written. So the hook can be anything from a quotation to a question to um, some pop culture reference to some type of example. All of those are fair game for an introduction. But whenever you give a hook, and that's the, the main purpose of that is to get your reader interested in your paper topic and interested in the idea that you're presenting in your paper, you ultimately have to make that transition into the important ideas that you're going to talk about as well because entertainment versus informing are two different things, okay? The hook is more of entertaining them to get them interested. Then we have to transition into the actual academic writing of the paper. So you can think of some of those things that I just mentioned for a hook, but when you're doing a transition, think of you know things like similarly, however, therefore, uh, furthermore, in addition, for example, right? Those are all transitions that you can use. Then we've got to start mentioning some ideas uh, for our particular topic. So any key terms that may come up within our paper, uh, any key authors that may come up within our paper, um, any jargon that they'll need to be informed about. So that's scientific language or language particular field. You've got to let them know uh, what they need to know about your topic in order to understand it. So this is where you're covering kind of an overview uh, of your persuasive research essay topic, okay? But then you ultimately have to remember that you're writing a persuasive research um, paper, and that means that research is very important, and because it's a persuasive topic, you also have a debate as well as a conversation. So you'll notice number four on this list talks about the debate. So you have to make sure that we understand both sides of the argument, and if you can anchor that in research, it's even better. So once you finish that side of things, you've got to transition, right, uh, from the debate into your stance and into your thesis. So your thesis is largely your claim, but you do want to be thinking, how can I bring the other side of the debate into that? Many students decide to foreground the opposing side in their thesis then move into their own stance and the reasons associated with that. So I will attach the thesis generator here as well. Your thesis statements can really be anywhere from uh, uh, two, right, uh, two up to, uh, you know, three or four sentences long. Uh, we call them thesis or thesis statements, not thesis sentences, okay? Um, so these are the six steps that might help you through your introductory paragraphs. And an example of an introductory paragraph is down below right here. So it is color-coded to help you understand um, some of the elements that are here and largely if you look on the side there are some comments that you can go back and you can look at but i want to walk you through this particular student example that i had from some time ago uh, and it sticks with me largely because they're doing a lot of good things so you'll notice in the very beginning they use a quote from a uh, robin williams movie patch adams and then they transition but they transition not using a typical transition word but instead they transition repeating somewhat of an idea or a word so they're moving from the idea of people feeling powerless to empowering. So all of a sudden we've got some ideas that we're going to be talking about within the paper transitioning to a powerful state in terms of education. And then we've got educational journeys, we've got technology being mentioned, we've got generations, we've got universities and educators. So notice all the key terms 
words and keywords being brought up uh, within their within their, their introduction that they're going to be using within their paper. Uh, you'll also notice that uh, collaboration is here, okay? And then you'll notice we switch to another color, and this is where the, uh, the authors start to appear. So this is largely where we begin two things. We give the debate, but we're anchoring that debate within the summaries of two framing text. What that means are uh, the texts that are super important for our research paper and probably that we keep coming back to over and over again. So this student uh, decides to give us the ACTs for a book by James Paul Gee and uh, then give us the ACTs for another source um, that she's going to be referring to multiple times. So you'll notice here's uh, part of it. Here's the uh, summary of that. Uh, here's the ACTs for this source. And then the transition in the middle of those to help us understand, you know, that these two things are related to one another. And then we get that debate, right, which is right down here where it says many instructors assume that educating with technology as tools in the classroom can be disruptive and distractions uh, are disruptions and distractions for their students. However, right, notice that we get that transition. We're now moving into the thesis. We're moving into essentially the student's stance about their topic, which is technology in the classroom is not a distraction and disruption when it's used properly and can be used uh, through collaboration. Okay, um, so you'll notice that we've got some transition words in that thesis as well, but the thesis generated can help you through that part. So hopefully this shows you the, the steps, right, the six steps that you can follow to writing a solid introduction. Some students will always ask the question, isn't this a really long intro? This is a pretty long intro. It can be cut back a little bit, um, but you do want to make sure that you can hit these six elements going through a hook. You've got transitions going throughout. You give us the key ideas and the, the main ideas that you're going to be talking about within the paper. We understand the overall debate around your topic. And then we have that solid thesis statement, which is a claim that you're making that contains uh, both sides of the argument. And then we ultimately know where you stand. Okay, so hopefully you found this helpful. Please email me if you have any questions, of course. Um, take a look at the document, this one that's loaded with the video, as well as uh, the example that's loaded with here. And uh, other than that, stay brilliant, guys.